Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well and of course Arnie does too. Now on this channel I've done plenty of videos on recently extinct species. This can be quite a sad topic to make a video on, but some people, such as myself, hope that there's still a chance that supposedly extinct species are still out there. Even though the human population is growing substantially year on year, we still don't populate every corner of the planet. This could mean that in the remote corners of the world there could still be supposedly extinct animals out there. And although this may seem like wishful thinking, this has happened before. There are plenty of animals that were once thought to be extinct but were then later rediscovered. In this video I'll be focusing on a few of these animals, as I'll be going through five extinct species that were rediscovered. And for our first species we'll be making our way over to New Zealand, as we have the takahi. This chicken-like bird is the largest living member of the rail family, and is often confused with the closely related pukeko. The takahi is much stockier, and is way less common. This bird was once found in alpine grasslands and swamps, but as humans have turned most swampland habitats into farmland, these birds are almost exclusively found in grasslands today. In these areas they have a highly fibrous diet of grasses, but they're also known to be opportunistic feeders and will eat protein in the form of insects, sometimes including the famous wetter. In this video I will be focusing on the South Island Takahi. This is the only Takahi that survives to this day, but there used to be another species on the North Island. The North Island Takahi was even larger than the South Island Takahi and was thought to have gone extinct in the 1890s. It's thought that the North Island Takahi's extinction was both caused by hunting by the Maori people and loss of their grassland habitats. The first South Island Takahi was described by European in 1847, but this was only from fossilised bones. Later on in 1850, the first living bird was captured, and three more were collected in the 19th century. In 1898, the last bird was captured, and as no more could be found, they were presumed extinct. But how did the Takahi's numbers get so low? Well, one of the reasons lies in New Zealand's unique ecosystem. As it was cut off from the rest of the world for millions of years, it had a very unique ecosystem dominated by large birds. There were very few native mammals, and this allowed the many large flightless birds to evolve. When the Polynesian settlers arrived, they brought with them dogs and rats. The takahi was easy food for these invasive species, and when the Europeans arrived in the 19th century, they brought with them even more deadly predators, such as stoats. This is one of the main reasons why they were in peril, but their numbers were thought to be in decline before any settlers arrived. The takahi thrived in alpine grasslands, but the post-glacial era destroyed many of these zones. The South Island takahi was presumed extinct for 50 years. This was until a carefully planned search found a takahi population in the South Island Island's Murchison Mountains. This population numbered only in the hundreds, but thanks to captive breeding and conservation efforts, their population is steadily growing. This species is now managed by the New Zealand Department of Conservation, and they've done a very good job at increasing their population. If you ever get a chance to, I recommend going over to their YouTube channel, as they have plenty of interesting videos about New Zealand's wildlife. Although their population is increasing, they're still not out of the woods yet, as they're still preyed upon by the invasive stoats. If you do want to help these birds out, I've left a donation link in the description below, and hopefully we'll see more of these birds in the wild in the future. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to South America, as we have the Chacoan peccary. Today, this peccary is mostly found in hot, dry areas, which are usually dominated by low-lying succulents and thorny bushes. This peccary is the largest of the three species of peccaries, measuring around 70 centimeters at the shoulder. In their arid homes, they don't have much to choose from when it comes to food, and these peccaries generally feed on cacti, roots, and other rough plants. This peccary was first described in 1930, but this description was only based on fossils. It was thought to be a long extinct species, and this remained the case until 1971. This is when a Chacoan peccary was discovered in Argentina, and even though it eluded the Western scientists for so long, it was very well known to the native people. One of the reasons it took scientists so long to discover them was the fact that they're very elusive. They can often go unseen if wanted, and as they were hunted by the local people, they had built up a fear of humans. Another reason is the fact that they're found in such remote areas that very few Western scientists had explored. Although this peccary was rediscovered, it was by no means abundant. There are approximately 3,000 left in the world today, with many residing in zoos. They are currently listed as endangered, with habitat loss and fragmentation being the main causes. Their once remote homes have now been turned into Texas-style ranches, and hunting still continues in some areas. But hopefully with the help of conservationists and captive breeding, we'll get to see more of these peccaries in the future. But for our next species, we'll be heading into the ocean, as we have the coelacanth. Coelacanths follow the oldest known living lineage of lobe-finned fish. This means that they're more closely related to lungfish and tetrapods, than they are to have a ray-finned fish. The oldest known coelacanth fossils are over 410 million years old, and they were thought to have gone extinct in the late Cretaceous period. Before 1938, it was assumed that all coelacanths were extinct. It was believed that they were wiped out in the same extinction that claimed the dinosaurs, and they were just another 
strange creature that we'd never get to see in our lifetimes. This was until just a few days before Christmas in 1938. Trawler in the Indian Ocean caught a strange looking fish in its nets. The captain took no notice of this strange fish and the ship made its way to East London, South Africa. It was here that the curator of the local museum identified the fish and it was the West Indian Ocean coelacanth. Although this discovery was very impressive, there was still more to come. Later on in September 1997, a coelacanth was spotted in a fish market on the island of Sulawesi. This coelacanth turned out to be a different species, the Indonesian coelacanth. But how did both these species go so long without being discovered? Well, the main reason is their habitat. In the day, these coelacanths rest in caves, which can be anywhere up to 500 meters deep. At night, they drift towards reefs, where they mainly feed on other small fish and cephalopods. This meant that it was almost impossible for divers to find them in the day, and they could only be caught by deep sea trawlers. Although it's exciting to know that these prehistoric fish still roam our oceans, this could change in the near future. Both of these species are threatened to some extent, as some are still accidentally caught in fishing nets to this day. There are many conservation efforts to help save these species, and their populations are heavily monitored. So this fish really has to go down, as one of the most shocking rediscoveries in human times. But for our next species, we'll be heading to Central and South America, as we have the bush dog. These tiny dogs are some of the strangest canines in the world, and they have some very confusing names. They tend to inhabit lowland forests and wet savannas. These canines are social animals and live in groups of up to 12 individuals. As they live in areas with very low visibility, these dogs are great communicators and make a whole host of different sounds. <coughs> The bush dog is the only living species in its genus, but it's thought that its closest living relative is the maned wolf. Although these dogs are very small, they are capable of taking on surprisingly large prey. They feed on many of the unique animals in South America, such as packers, capybaras, rheas, and even tapirs. These dogs are very at home in the water, as they're great swimmers and divers, and even has partially webbed feet to help it swim. The species was first identified by Peter Wilhelm Lund from fossils in a Brazilian cave, and it was believed to be a long extinct animal. A few decades later, bush dogs were found in both Central and South America, and they were even found living as far north as Costa Rica. Despite this vast dwelling area, this dog can be quite hard to spot in the wild, as they tend to prefer areas with very low visibility. Today they are listed as near threatened, as many of their native habitats are being destroyed. If you were ever looking to find one, they are very popular in zoos, so although these dogs were once thought extinct, these dogs didn't go anywhere. If our final species will be heading over to New Guinea, as we have the New Guinea singing dog. This canine is an ancient lineage of dog, and is closely related to the Australian dingo. These dogs have a reputation for their unique vocalizations, hence why it's in their name. These dogs prefer mountainous terrain and are almost only found in New Guinea's highlands. At first glance, these dogs seem very similar to domesticated dogs, but these singing dogs have wider cheekbones and narrow muzzles. These dogs were thought to have gone extinct in the 1970s. After hearing strange singing noises in the remote parts of New Guinea, researchers rediscovered this species in 2016. It is estimated that there are only 200 to 300 New Guinea singing dogs currently in captivity, so unfortunately this species is still very rare. So out of all the species on this list, this dog definitely has the best singing voice. But that's about it for this video. If you have any suggestions for other videos you want me to make, then leave them down in the comments below. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.